Hi, everybody. Um, welcome. My name is Lauren McCarthy. Um, it is a wonderful thing for you to be here today at the Trans and Non-Binary Resource Expo. Um, this workshop is on supporting trans and non-binary youth. Uh, how I'm going to do it is I'm going to share my screen and go through a presentation that way. Um, so let me go ahead and, and start that. So, um, like I said, my name is Lauren McCarthy. I'm a licensed social worker at PFY um, at our uh, Nassau location in Belmore, um, and I do use they, them, theirs pronouns. So today's workshop, like I said, is about supporting trans and non-binary youth. I do want to say when we say supporting, uh, this can be as, you know, that you can support a trans and non-binary young person as a parent, as a caregiver, as a family member, a friend, family friend, you know, overall just an adult figure in a young person's life. Uh, you can also, um, you know, be a teacher, counselor, you know, the list can go on, but really understanding, you know, we can all support trans and non-binary youth, no matter what our role is in um, people's lives. Uh, I will say during this presentation, definitely know that you can use the chat feature uh, to put any questions or, or thoughts. Um, I will be able to connect with you all and, um, I am again really uh, appreciative of you all being here today. So let's let's start it. Uh, I think you know the the biggest thing I do want to do is is start with some basic terminology and, and information. I know many of you maybe have you know this, but um, I know that maybe there are people of varying ranges of knowledge here today. So the first I, I do want to reference is of course knowing the LGBTQ acronym and it's made up of different sexual orientations and, and gender identities. And one of which of course we'll be talking about um, the T which stands for transgender. Uh, we will be discussing specifically what it means to be transgender, how to support trans youth and of course non-binary youth as well. Um, so one quick thing we want to talk about first is, is really understanding what gender is and not. Uh, so I know that a lot of us maybe have experienced the sense that gender and sex are the same thing. Um, and today we really want to you know, understand um, first off that they we got to pull them apart because they're not the same thing. Uh, oftentimes people maybe use them interchangeably and that's just not really the case. When we do say sex assigned at birth, um, you know, or when we hear the word sex, language should be sex assigned at birth because it's something that's given to us, right? It's assigned to us. Um, you know, we all are born at some point and a doctor will look at us and, and based off of, you know, what genitals we have um, put in, you know, M or F on our birth certificate. We don't have a say, we're little babies, right? Um, and we really do have to understand, um, you know, it is, you know, given to us. And, and for some, you know, what we're assigned at birth is not maybe, matching up with who we actually are. Um, and that's where it really comes into understanding what gender is. Um, and gender is expansive and it has so much things to it. One of, you know, I like to actually break it down to understand what it is um, and what parts and experiences we have with it. Uh, it is not defined by our body parts. Um, it is not limited to just male or female, as we will see. And it you know, first experience we can, you know, well, one experience we have is, is definitely our gender identity, right? How we know ourselves, how we see ourselves, um, how we understand who we are. We also like to express gender, right? And how we look, very external experience. Um, and I think another way we, we um, sort of experience gender is, is definitely through society, what society we're a part of, our culture, um, you know, what norms or roles exist that can create pressure for us to do certain things or, or we have to fulfill certain expectations, um, whether we feel we have to or we're told we have to, and that could be based off of our sex assigned at birth and not really our true gender. Um, it could be based off of, you know, what gender we have. Um, and, you know, that's definitely one thing we, we really have to understand that trans and non-binary youth contend with is, you know, the way that gender is, is reinforced um, in, in maybe very exclusionary ways. Um, you know, gender is a social construct, meaning it's, it's a an idea that's been created by people and, and given power to by people in a society, you know, it is not objective. It's not, um, it actually is, is subjective and can change, meaning, you know, one society can have certain roles and norms for, for gender and another society can have, you know, completely different ones. Um, and that really can show that, 
you know, we have the power to really say, hey, you know, that's actually not accurate. Um, we should really open our minds and, and you know, change how we're, we're viewing things or teaching things or reinforcing roles or norms. Um, you know, in our society in, in the United States, I know we're at a virtual event, anybody can be anywhere, but being a, a Western society, there's often been a socially constructed way of viewing gender called the gender binary. Um, this sense that you have just being male or female and like, that's it, nothing else exists. Um, the binary also sometimes puts forth that what you're assigned at birth has to be what you identify as and we'll learn that that's not the case. Um, so we really have to challenge ourselves to open our minds and realize that this way of viewing gender is, is very inaccurate to human experience, can be very um, invalidating to people um, and can, you know, cause harm if, if people, you know, especially at young ages want to or, or show that, you know, that's not they don't li link up to this um, and, you know, whether we really realize, okay, that's, that's totally cool, you know, and be you, or we reinforce this and can invalidate that person's experience. Um, you know, so it, it is a challenge because I know a lot of us, you know, we maybe have just been reinforced these things and, and still today we can see it in, in media and all of that, um, but it's important for us to continue and open up that sense of, you know, I want to grow, I want to learn more. Um, you know, of course, we do want to recognize um, just different terminology of how people can, you know, be and, and who they are. And so um, we have different ways that people experience, you know, who they, they are. So one of which is being transgender, which simply means when your gender does not align with the sex that you are assigned at birth. Um, we have non-binary individuals, again, when your gender does not align with the sex you are assigned at birth. For non-binary folks, it really can be the sense I am completely off of that binary. You know, those, that line, that sense of this or that does not fit me. Um, or it can be, I, I feel both of those, you know, I, I'm not one or the, you know, I'm both or, or, you know, I'm neither of those. Um, and then of course I do wanna bring up what cisgender means um, just because it's, it's good to understand this term if you've never heard it before. And that just means when somebody's gender aligns with the sex they were assigned at birth. Um, being cisgender is not a part of the trans or non-binary community, but I feel it is highly important just to know what that term is. Um, Cause if you see it and we should also start to get in the habit if, if you are cisgender saying, you know, I'm a cisgender man or I'm a cisgender woman, um, just so we can understand that there's also trans men and trans women and non-binary folks. Um, you know, for gender identity, it is known that people as young as three to five can, can get a sense of, of who they are and understand what their gender is, um, you know, and so it, it really is important to, to recognize that a lot of times for young kiddos it can be in language of you know I'm not a girl why is everybody telling me that or um you know why do I have to dress like this or I want my hair long um to even being like you know why don't I have this body part or why don't I have this genitalia um and you know that can be some people's experience and we'll learn how, if that is coming up, how do you support and explore that with that young kiddo? And, you know, knowing that the best thing is to really not shame that person, you know, it, it sort of is to feed into that sense of, I hear you and, and let's, you know, talk through that, even knowing that, yeah, they're young, three to five years old. Um, I will say, of course, you know, understanding too that, that for some people, you know, you can really understand that you're trans or non-binary at any age. It doesn't have to be that it has to be at five years old. Um, you know, for many people, you know, maybe there's not the, the language to put to their experience, maybe, um, for safety concerns, not being able to actually connect with who they actually are. And, and that's why they maybe come out later in life. Um, but, you know, just really throwing that out there too, that it, it's okay if people, you know, maybe don't really can reflect on being, you know, young and saying those things, or if you're a parent, you know, if you don't hear that and then your kids, you know, 12 and, and says stuff, it doesn't mean that they didn't have maybe some experiences of understanding their trans and non-binary at different ages. It's just, you know, for whatever reason, like that's the time that it like connects and they want to be like, you know, finally able to say, this is who I am. 
Um, we also have, you know, the external part of, of gender, um, which is, is seen through our expression, you know, the way that we communicate gender with the world around us, with all different ways we can do that, clothing, hair, um, you know, even in our names, what pronouns we like to use. Uh, the biggest thing with expression is really for us to understand um, that, you know, there's no wrong way to express our gender. Um, you know, that goes for really trans, non-binary, cisgender individuals, um, you know, the, the right way to express your gender is what feels good for you. Um, and that's where, you know, for supporting people in their gender expression, um, especially trans and non-binary folks, you know, it's understanding that, you know, somebody doesn't have to look masculine if they identify as a man. And if somebody is a woman, you know, doesn't have to be feminine. If, if somebody's non-binary, you know, they don't have to be androgynous, you know, a blend of masculinity and femininity, you know, for, for people, what's important is what feels right for us. So if you have somebody who is, you know, a, a girl, a trans girl, and, and she doesn't want to wear dresses or play around with makeup, and she, she wants to just, that should be supported. It's not that you know, because she's not feminine that we have to question, oh, you know, what's this about? It really is being like, nope, however way you want to dress and, and express yourself is the right way to express your gender. Um, you know, for a lot of times for trans and non-binary folks, expression is often very critical for them to be exploring themselves and figuring out what feels affirming and comfortable um, and need those affirming stances from other people in their life going along with that and being like, you look great, or that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad you, you want this, or you look like this, or let's go shopping and opening up the possibility you can go anywhere. Um, you know, a lot of times it's, you know, it's, it's really important to have this part, you know, the external part be um, expressed and supported. You know, we do know that trans and non-binary folks do experience what we call dysphoria. Um, this is another experience that, you know, oftentimes does require a lot of support on behalf of, of course, you know, that trans and non-binary person getting the support they need, but also being supported by people in their life. Because um, dysphoria, you know, simply defined as a state of uneasiness or discomfort. And so people who are trans and non-binary experience what we call gender dysphoria, is that feeling strongly, you know, wait a minute, my gender, who I am is not aligning with what I was assigned at birth, my sex assigned at birth. Um, it can be that moment of, you know, I feel very disconnected. People are calling me a girl. I know I'm not a girl, you know. Um, people are saying I'm, I'm a boy. I know I'm not either a boy or a girl, you know, I'm, I'm non-binary. I don't fit those. Um, and it can bring up, you know, of course, anxiety and stress. Gender dysphoria is something that a person can experience, you know, just maybe looking in the mirror when they're, you know, alone, but gender dysphoria can also be brought on by other people, meaning, you know, if you do um, use the wrong pronouns for somebody, or if you do, you know, for a young kiddo saying, you know, I'm not a girl, and, and people are being like, no, you are, you are, um, or only seeing that person as the sex that they were assigned at birth can, can bring about dysphoria as well. Some trans and non-binary people also experience body dysphoria, meaning they might have a feeling of disconnect or um, hatred toward certain body parts that they have or that they don't have certain body parts. And this can also be distressing and produce anxiety and depression. Um, that's why some people with body dysphoria do desire medical interventions to help fit themselves, their bodies, you know, fit into their bodies and, and who they are. Um, that's another area where you can be a supportive person of really hearing out, you know, why this person um, wants these surgeries, gender affirming surgeries, um, knowing that it, it really is at the core of it to alleviate stress, anxiety, depression. Um, so it's, it's highly correlated with um, alleviating mental health things that people might be going through and, and as such should be supported. Um, you know, it, it really is um, critical to understand though too that um, not everybody experiences uh, body dysphoria. I know it, there's been a misconception that if you are trans um, or non-binary, you have to hate, you know, your body and not like certain parts. For some people, yes, we, we do know that is true. Um, but not every trans person dislikes their body. Um, and so that should also be if you are um, somebody, you know, and 
the the kiddo or you know, young person doesn't want surgery, you know, to know that that's totally fine if they're saying that they're good and they don't need that, um, take their word for it. Um, so, you know, it dysphoria is something that definitely um, requires support. So, for you to be a person. Um, even if you don't know exactly how to help. And for dysphoria, it is an experience that can hit people in waves, can be quite present some days, not so much other days. For some people, it can be pretty consistently happening every day. Um, you know, but with dysphoria, it is something that can be um, alleviated or, or managed um, in, in most cases. In other ways, we do have to understand, um, you know, especially if, if somebody's not supported, um, that dysphoria can be very overwhelming and, and feel like it can't get any better. Um, and, and that's where it really is important for us to be affirming and validating um, people because they might be in environments where, you know, they're not getting that and that can contribute to, you know, gender dysphoria. Um, and again, it can be a very distressing, um, depressing experience to be going through. Um, this is why also, you know, you maybe have heard of trans people transitioning, you know, any step that a person is taking to affirm their gender identity, um, step or steps, I should say, yeah. Uh, you know, this can be in social ways, medical ways, and, and legal ways. Um, I, I will say with transitioning, there is no wrong way to do it. It really comes down to what is accessible for people and, you know, also what people you know, feel like they need to do. So for some, it is very much a, a social transition, telling people about your gender, maybe going by a different name, um, asking people, hey, can you use different pronouns for me? Um, you know, gender, you know, using different gender language for that person to match their gender. Um, could be for that kiddo, you know, just to change up their gender expression. Maybe they used to really feel like they had to wear dresses and skirts and makeup. And, you know, now they're like, that does not fit me. You know, I want t-shirt and jeans. You know, I don't want makeup. Um, those are all different ways um, that we need to support people in their exploration of, of socially transitioning. It could also be medical. Um, so we do know hormone replacement therapy exists. Um, people can go on estrogen to feminize their bodies and um, appearance or uh, testosterone to masculize. We also know there are gender affirming surgeries that I had mentioned before, um, you know, to help remove certain body parts or, or create certain body parts so that that person can feel comfortable in their skin and, and their body. We also know that puberty blockers exist. So for kids or kiddos who haven't gone through puberty um, and um, that could be a very distressing experience, I will say puberty for trans and, and non-binary folks because you could be going through a puberty that does not align with who you actually are. Um, so puber puberty blockers exist to put a pause on that puberty um, to help that, that kiddo you know, maybe make decisions of whether they want to go on certain hormones uh, definitely could be the case. Um, for some, it's just to put a, a block so that that kid can explore what feels right, what they want, um, you know, just to get support to, to not go through that puberty at the time um, that they might be going through. Um, so it really does does wonders for, for young people. It does not get rid of, you know, puberty for the long run um, once you remove the blockers, you know, you, the person will go through puberty, but if you do, you know, choose, you can, especially if they choose to go on hormone replacement therapy, they can now go through an affirming puberty. Um, because once you go through your puberty um, and you're, you're not on hormones, you know, certain things that, that happen with puberty and those body changes then, you know, have to be, you know, contend, you know, contended with, post puberty, you know, and those things, um, you know, then can lead to people wanting to get, now have to get surgery or go on hormones. Um, and then of course we know that you can legally um, transition, meaning, you know, getting a legally um, official, official, uh, uh, official legal name change or gender marker changes on your documents um, and, and change those. So M, F, I know some states are now doing X, um, which is wonderful. I will say, you know, I did mention a whole lot um, and some people don't do any of these and that is A-OK. -okay. They are still trans and non-binary. 
I will say some people do a lot of these and, and that is what they, they need to affirm themselves and be better. Um, I know for, for young kiddos, you know, a lot of times it is that, that social experience of coming out, telling people, um, maybe using different pronouns or language. Um, but of course, you know, young people can also decide, you know, in, in regards to different medical things they might want to go on and, and legal name changes. If you are a parent or um, caregiver, or, um, you know, that knowing that you most likely as a parent, you know, would be involved in that um, to provide, you know, consent and, and those things. Um, and also transitioning at any pace is super valid. Um, you know, this being trans and non-binary is not a phase. Um, so even if, you know, they might, you know, young kiddos might not feel so comfortable socially transitioning in every space, you know, or they're going at a slower pace, it, it does not mean that, you know, they're making it up or they're not truly who they are. It's, it's that, you know, there's, there can be a lot to transitioning. Um, and, you know, it, it's really just when a trans person, you know, young person and, and youth come out, it, it's really awesome, you know, to actually let them explore, let them try and figure out what their relationship with gender is. Um, I'm not saying you have to have these conversations with your, your kiddo um, or the young person, but it could be healthy just to understand that these things can be, you know, questions in that you that that person wants to talk about and could be that they need, you know, counseling. Um, you know, of course, at PFY, we have LGBTQ affirming counseling available. We also have a lot of social programming that we talk about these things too. Um, so knowing like your, your supportive nature could be, you know, if you, if you can't have those conversations with your, your young person, you know, finding them spaces that they can, um, or if they do present, like, I want to talk about these things, you know, go with it. Um, and being, very open and knowing um, it is actually very healthy to explore, um, especially at young ages. I think we can also, we can all reflect to if we, you know, are a bit older, our time of being a teenager, you know, regardless of our gender, that is a very much a space of exploring and trying to figure out who we are and, and growth. Um, and it can be really Im Im important to, to support that, that period of exploration. Um, and, you know, one of which is is really that we we have to understand that gender, um, I mean, trans and non-binary folks, as much as we do talk about dysphoria and some of the hardships, um, also can experience euphoria, you know, complete comfort and joy with their gender. And it can come from, you know, places of just hearing their pronoun being used correctly, hearing the name that they said they want to be called. Um, of course, it can also be to you know, getting on hormones, um, seeing those changes that it's doing, having a surgery, uh, you know, and for gender euphoria, as much as it definitely can come from within with that trans and non-binary young person, it also is ways, you know, we can contribute to somebody's euphoria when we use the right pronouns, when, you know, somebody says, hey, I'm this, and we go, awesome, that's so great you know, and, and, you know, what pronouns do you use, you know, really going along the lines of, of being extremely supportive. Um, and, you know, it doesn't have to be in huge ways, of course, we want that too, but just in the simple ways of, of, like I said, going to a store and, and not pushing the kiddo to, to have to go to a certain, you know, section of the store for clothes, or, you know, not, saying you can't play with these toys, really being like, oh, that's what you want? Awesome. And you can see that joy, you know, just hit. <clears throat> we, you know, we can't, of course, deny, though, that the young kiddos, trans and non-binary kiddos do experience unfortunate things um, that are not affirming and, and are quite invalidating and, and harmful. Of course, you know, in the school environment, that can be the case. Um, as you can see with a lot of these statistics, um, there's just unfortunately a lot of bullying that can be going on verbally, cyber, um, you know, that this can cause, you know, kids to not want to go to school, rightfully so. Um, and, you know, it's not that, oh, I, I hate that I have a math test today. I don't want to go. I use math because I'm not good at math. Um, it's really like, I, I just don't feel safe there. You know, who's going to say something to me? It could also be, you know, that you can't be who you are and, it, and it's stressful to just be in a, 
school environment, seeing everybody else, you know, being able to just be open and, and who they are and, and you, you know, can't hear the name that you want to be called or the pronouns that you wish could be used for you or dress the way that you want to without fearing somebody's going to do something or say something mean or cruel. Um, and, you know, too, in school environments, we know, unfortunately, that that can um, come from students and as well, you know, staff. And, and teachers, um, and that sometimes nothing is is done about it, uh, which is truly heartbreaking. So if you're in a school environment, really knowing um, it's best to, to take action and take these things seriously. Um, we, of course, know that it can in, happen in the home <clears throat> amongst family. Unfortunately, a lot of trans and non-binary young people do experience rejection from their families of origin um, to the point that they can be kicked out of their homes or not welcome there, um, you know, about, to, you know, and that can, you know, that very much often comes up when, you know, a trans person decides to come out to their family or their family realizes that's who they are. Um, you know, but we also know that there are a lot of people who do come out to their families or or maybe aren't out and like the statistic shows, you know, just hear negative comments about being LGBTQ. So if, if you're a trans and non-binary person, if you're out, of course, hearing that is not good. And then if you aren't out, it can create that sense of, well, I can't come out at home. You know, I have to shove that down. I can't talk about that. I can't be myself. Um, and then we know in, in general, in society, you know, what trans and non-binary kiddos face um, and young people. And, you know, a common thing is harassment. Um, another way is, is maybe being denied certain services or not being able to go to the bathroom they want um, or fitting room. I think, you know, this can create a lot of times this not feeling so safe in public, um, of course, you know, kicked out of your house, now you're experiencing homelessness. Um, and, you know, we do know that there was a Supreme Court decision that did try and, you know, say that you cannot be discriminated against in the workplace and other spaces um, just because you're, you're trans. But we do know that there's no comprehensive law right now that, that does that for our, our whole um, country. And, you know, we do know that when it comes down to you know states um, and local governments, there's unfortunately been a lot of um, push to write a lot of discriminatory laws. Um, I know the biggest thing right now is um, trans uh, and non-binary youth being able to just straight up access um, uh, healthcare, you know, medical care, uh, and another big one too is is now in in schools. Um, regarding and other spaces too regarding sports um so not being able to play the sport uh to with the team that you uh would feel most comfortable being around um and i hope that you really do understand for like kids reference your own self in in high school or middle school like was was sports a big part of your development or what you really got out of being a, a young person and now we are having you know laws being put up that say you can't you know join that team you have to be in the other team or you know maybe you straight up can't be a part of sports at all and we know that some uh you know trans and non-binary youth and lgbtq youth in general you know decide not to join sports or, or maybe even clubs and schools because they know they're not going to be supported or affirmed um and you know we really have to understand um that trans and non-binary youth are experiencing tremendous amounts of pain and suffering and, and hurt um, at the hands of others, uh, whether, you know, within their own sphere of people, from strangers, from the way that we see people being talked about in media or through the certain laws that are coming out. Um, and, and what this really is, is unfortunately just ignorance and discrimination and hate. Um, and at the, the core of it, what this can do is, is unfortunately lead to, um, you know, people feeling like they have no other way to, you know, deal with this than to maybe take their life. So we do know 42% of trans folks attempt suicide. And of those um, attempts, 90% are before the age of 25. Uh, so we're losing, unfortunately, a, you know, I know these are just attempts, but uh, a lot of young people um, 
you know, either their lives are, are cut short or, um, you know, it are just very difficult. And um, you can imagine, you know, if you are harassed or told you can't be who you are, or that's the message you pick up, or you're dehumanized and invalidated, you know, it's safe to say, you know, it, it, it unfortunately um, just connects with, with mental health um, that can be, you know, that can deteriorate and, and lead to that point of, saying, you know, I, I might as well not exist. Um, and we really have to, you know, through this workshop, I hope we realize we have to be the ones that don't contribute to that hurt. Um, we do know, you know, sometimes things are, and I, I'm not a parent, but I know, you know, for parents, it, it, it sometimes can be scary. You can do as much as you can, but you know that your kid goes to school and might be experiencing that. Or, you know, just in, in everyday, you know, life, we can't control what everybody might experience, but we can sure as, you know, heck control that we're not the ones doing Doing it, you know, we're not contributing to those statistics. We're battling them. We're trying to lower them, right? Um, and especially this one, we don't want to be contributing to somebody's sense of of not wanting to be alive. Um, and so, you know, how do we how do we do that? So I know we talked a lot, um, and you know, this is just for for reference of, of course, you know, the experiences I talked about, what they can, you know. Um, make people feel and, and what they, you know, deal with. Um, but I, I really do want to um, talk through in, in a moment, you know, a continued um, conversation on, on different ways to support. Uh, so, you know, we really understand um, that. Um, and, and actually, I do want to say, I, I do can uh, say, give yourself a pat on the back for just being here. I think that in of itself um, really does show that um, you are already in that space of wanting to support. And um, that's really awesome. So um, how, you know, first off, we really want to understand why pronouns are so important. Um, you know, they are ways that we can acknowledge somebody for who they are. Um, you know, pro pronouns, um, of course, can change. Um, so knowing as a, as a person, um, if a young person is using a pronoun one day and, and switches it up, that that is actually very awesome um, and really let that person explore what feels best for them. Um, you know, that's why it's always safe to, you know, ask what pronouns they use or if somebody tells you, you know, this day I'm using this one, really try. Uh, um, you know, I know uh, it could mean that you mess up. It's okay. Um, also knowing it's okay for your the kiddo to be upset that you messed up, um, you know, and, and, but don't, you know, beat yourself up about it really is about um, correcting yourself, doing better the next time, um, you know, and, and encourage, you know, that it's okay if you use different, you know, pronouns um, and not to challenge that if they use she one day and now they're using they, not to be like, you know, what is this? What are you doing? Really be like, awesome and just use it. Um, we know, of course, that some um, trans people really um, like to, you know, maybe sometimes change the name that they were given at birth. Um, and we really do need to understand um, that as, especially I talk to the parents, you know, it's okay if your kid, um, you know, wants to change their name. And I know that that can be sad for you or it can hurt, um, but it really is not a reflection of you as a parent. It is truly about that kid wanting to be seen and understood and affirmed in who they are. Um, and a name can do that. Uh, usually, um, you know, it's okay for a kid even to try and change up what name uh, they want to use and um, really for you to process that with your kid and, and really um, make sure that uh, they um, are supported in, in that change. Um, and, you know, remember uh, that that's what you're there for, to support, um, and that, you know, they're still alive, uh, they're still able to, um, you know, be there, and it's, it's truly important to um, be supportive. Sorry, my dog is at the door. Um, so, you know, really just allowing them to change up their name. You can support them by, you know, the best way to support is is really being like, hey, let's go to Starbucks, you know, and, and use a different name, see how that feels. Um, and, you know, uh, that's really, really important. Um, it also can be uh, that you can, of course, 
uh, get Uh, you know, you can really get the sense of, of changing um, gender markers, really important to do that. Um, and those are, are, you know, on the legal ways, um, both ways to really, uh, you know, they take, they are, it can be a long process. Um, I do always like to say that there are unfortunately barriers and, and that's where a lot of times you can also be a supportive person and, and really um, understand that uh, it can be hard to, you know, go through these barriers. So being, you know, a parent or an adult figure and, and really helping them, you know, just deal if they, they can't access certain things or, you know, that these things also can take time and it's, it's really important to, um, you know, do that. Um, we also, um, you know, I, I do speak to the parents and caregivers here, um, just really understanding that uh, for some, you know, there is a narrative of, you know, maybe feeling a sense of loss um, and, and not that your kid isn't, you know, alive, but the sense of um, it's okay to feel sad that, you know, the narrative that you had for your kid is, is changing, um, you know, but the real important thing for this is you know, don't put that on your kiddo, um, you know, process that with trusted people, um, process that outside of your conversations with your kid. Um, you don't want to make them feel guilty for being uh, them. You, you don't want to make them feel guilty. Um, your child is still here and they're alive. Um, and by really recognizing that and, and, and not feeding into guilting or rejecting them or telling them that, you know, they're hurting you because of this, um, you know, you, you, you know, it, it, it keeps them alive um, at the end of the day, because if you feed into those, if you're that person that tells your kid you're wrong or how much hurt they're causing you, um, your kid might not want to be around anymore. And, and that can be in the way of physically leaving, you know, not being at wanting to live at home anymore. It could be removing, you know, family from their life, knowing like I have to shut that door because it, it harms me. And unfortunately too, it could be that sense of, you know, that they feel they want to end their life. Um, so, you know, young trans people, you know, need people, need supportive people, just like we all need people to support us and affirm us. And, and that contributes to us being able to have a, a life that we feel is worth living and wanting to live and, and also just being able to be alive and thrive in life, right? Um, and, and that's what we really can, can do. So um, continuing on this conversation of support, uh, you know, those were some things specific to certain situations, but in, in general, how can we just be supportive um, and why it matters? So this is really why it matters. If you can see, and I know this is a little bit of a dated um, survey, but, you know, I would I would think that these, these things still ring true. Um, you can just see with supportive parents versus unsupportive parents, um, the statistics in, in whether, you know, people are, are reporting higher life satisfaction, um, you know, maybe, and with supportive parents suffering less from depression. You can just see, I mean, the biggest thing I think is the attempted suicide statistic of just seeing how drastic that is if you just have supportive parents in your life or caregivers. Um, so, you know, I think I always like to just show this image of just like how important it is if you just have supportive people in your life and what that can really do for you um, and do for that trans and, and non-binary young person. Um, so, you know, the conversation of support, I think, is, is really important for us. Um, you know, I, I, we use a lot of language of affirming um, rather than accepting. Um, and, and that's just because when we do say you're an accepting person or I, I am accepting, um, you know, it's not bad. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's, it's not active enough. Um, sometimes, you know, it can be um, just not enough to be like, I don't hate trans people um, or, you know, I don't have a problem with my kid being trans. Um, you know, it, that is definitely awesome, right? But sometimes they, they just maybe seem like, you know, vague words. Um, you know, accepting is, is sometimes can be seen as, you know, just you know, sort of words, and maybe you're not backing those words with actions, where we'll talk about being affirming is really showing up with those words and support and backing it with your everyday actions. You know, so again, I'm not saying words aren't important, they totally are, but paired with actions, that's like gold star material, right? Like that is that is showing care, consideration, and validation. 
through your actions. Um, so affirming care, what is that? You know, it is definitely about inviting conversations with your kid, um, educating yourself so that you can, you know, really bring those to the conversations you're having with your kid or, you know, that you're now understanding your kid a little bit more. Um, be open to talking about, you know, gender and expression and all of those things. Um, if, of course, they want to talk about those, um, you know, or, you know, it can be as simple as just, I want to know more about you. Um, you know, I, I love you. I, I want to support you. Uh, affirming is asking about pronouns, asking about names, supporting if they do choose different pronouns and names. Um, you know, you, you also, I will say to be affirming, you don't always have to truly understand everything. I will say, especially with dysphoria, if you are a cisgender, you know, person, you're not going to really understand wholeheartedly what that feels like, but that doesn't mean you can't connect with just understanding what stress feels like and depression and anxiety. And when you don't feel, you know, a hundred percent like yourself. Um, so really connecting with sometimes just the experiences that we all have maybe gone through or understand, um, you know, and not contributing to that um, pain or, or hurt. Uh, show your kids you want to be there for them. Um, you know, even if they don't want to talk, I think we can all reference when we were younger, you know, definitely moments where we were, we were like, go away to our parent or parents or person in our life where we don't want to talk. And, and that's okay. I know it can hurt, or, you know, but don't be too pushy because you know sometimes that we can drive people away for too much um you know I, I think a really great example of an affirming um adult in a trans person's life is of course Dwayne Wade seen here um with his his daughter who came out as trans and and he just straight up along with his his wife and, and other kids were just like that's it you know full support no questions asked not going to deny it not making it a big deal. Um, this is who my daughter is. I, you know, I, I love her. She is who she is. And, and I want to support her. Right. And I think he also said a lot of things of like, she of course knows who she is more, you know, than anybody. Um, and so he was really like, you know, that's it. If that, if that's who she is, if that's the name she wants to use or pronouns, all for it, full go. Um, you know, with a lot of times, um, you know, especially when, when trans and non-binary young people come out, you know, it can be very vulnerable and, you know, risky and they can share. And the real hope is just that people are still going to love them and want them around and, and talk with them and be there. Um, and so it really is urgently important to just do that. Um, you know, the, the child is, is still there, you know, you is alive and well in, in some ways and, and wants to share that. So really knowing like, by accept by affirming you are saving this person you know from other things that could be happening um you know of course we want to be affirming even when trans and non-binary people aren't around you know this is not just the thing that we do if we have a trans person in our life you know in conversations that we have you know always respecting the right name and pronouns to use um i think with with young kiddos it could be you know respecting their their pri privacy and also you know their right to maybe tell you like don't tell every family member or you know don't don't share this with other people and um you know really respecting that their boundaries um you know a big thing too is is not to use trans and non-binary people as encyclopedias for everything related to gender and expression um you know it's still okay to have conversations around it but sometimes we have to take a step back and be like this is a conversation i need to have with somebody else or i need to do my own research um you can also talk to your kids other about other stuff than gender. If your kid really wants to, and, and some people really do, go with it. But, you know, of course, we all exist and have different things that we like and, and outside of just, you know, parts of our identity. Um, and, you know, it, it really is important. And, you know, really, truly, the cost of, of not being affirming is, again, that chance that you might lose your young person, um, you know, whether they leave, right, or they cut off relationships or, or ties with people, or, of course, you know, they, they want, they, they end up, you know, choosing to attempt suicide or, um, you know, actually 
wind up taking their life. Um, you know, as you can see, affirming gender identity among trans and non-binary youth is consistently associated with lower suicide um, rates, um, lower rates of suicide attempts. It's just known. Um, the same could be, you know, supporting people in gender affirming clothing or expression also helps reduce the rate of suicide. So if nothing, you know, we really have to take this as like, you know, supporting people to be alive and well and and really wanting to be that that way. Um, you know, it's it's truly important. Um, I will say I, I do like to end on the note of knowing that, um, you know, sometimes we, we might make mistakes or we might say things, especially when it comes to maybe if somebody uses different names or if your kid changes up their pronouns and you mess up, um, you know, that it's okay to, to, to feel, you know, um, anger or, or frustration or, or sadness too. Um, you know, we're all humans, um, you know, we struggle. Um, I would say, you know, for parents who have trans kids and non-binary kids, um, you know, it, it can be challenging and, you know, not because oftentimes, if, especially if you're that affirming person, it's because you might be met with, you know, places and environments that are not affirming, school, you know, other avenues. Um, and so, you know, to give yourself grace, to know that it's hard, um, to give yourself that kindness. Um, you know, if, if you do mess up with things with your kid, you say you have a conversation you wish went better, to also know, you know, it's it's okay to recognize, you know, messed up there, um, but not to let it deter you from still trying and being there um, and, and showing up for yourself too. And for that young person, you know, oftentimes it's that thought, you know, you can't drink from an empty glass. So knowing you have to also fill your glass up. And, and that's where I think a lot of times it is important for as, you know, adults to know where can you talk about things, you know, your trans and non-binary kiddo you might have a lot of things they're going through, but you also are human. So I will say, if you see on, on the right, you know, there is a Pride for Parents group um, that we do at, at PFY that is, is for, as you see, all those lovely bullet points, um, but really how to just, you know, meet people who are maybe going through the same thing. If you you know, have certain things that you, you know, like I said, you shouldn't be discussing with your kid about struggles or hardships you're going through. You know, this is a non-judgmental space for that. Um, you know, outside of our Pride for Parents know that we also have a wealth of um, counseling services at our agency, also um, professional trainings, community ed, um, we have gender affirming services. So if you are looking to help your kiddo with um, any sort of thing for, for letter writing to get on hormones or surgeries, we do that. Um, we also help assist with any gender or name change um, uh, in, in, uh, situations because um, sometimes those can be quite overwhelming. Um, so we're really, you know, here for the community. Um, so with that, you know, being said, I, I do want to say thank you so much um, for being here. Um, of course, you know, if you have any questions, uh, you can continue to, to type them in the chat. Um, but I am very appreciative of everybody being here. Um, and uh, I hope uh, you have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you.